This video is part of consumer theory. In it, I will show you what elasticity of demand looks like along a linear demand. Let's see how elasticity of demand varies along a linear demand curve. Consider the example where Q equals A minus BP. According to this equation, when price is zero, the quantity is A. A is the quantity intercept. In addition, according to this equation, when quantity is zero, price must be A over B. A over B is the price intercept. The midpoint of demand is what it sounds like. It's the midway point on the demand line. The coordinates of the midpoint are exactly one half the coordinates of the intercepts. The price intercept was A over B, so at the midpoint, price is one half of A over B or A over 2B. The quantity intercept here is A, so at the midpoint, quantity is one half of A or A over 2. When demand is linear, elasticity of demand is perfectly elastic or equal to minus infinity at the price intercept, unit elastic or equal to minus 1 at the midpoint, and perfectly inelastic or equal to 0 at the quantity intercept. To see this, let's return to the formula for elasticity of demand, where elasticity is dq dp times p over q. In this example, dq dp is a constant minus b. Along a line, the slope is constant. However, elasticity of demand is more than just slope. It also depends on the ratio of price to quantity. And this ratio is changing even though the slope of the line is not. Consider, for example, when we are at the quantity intercept. At this point, quantity is A and price is zero. When we plug in a price of zero, we get an elasticity of demand that equals zero. At the midpoint, price is A over 2B and quantity is A over B. Let's plug these in. Plugging in for price and quantity and then simplifying gives us an elasticity at the midpoint of minus one. At the price intercept, price is A over B and quantity is zero. Plugging in a quantity of zero gives us an elasticity that's minus infinity. The midpoint allows us to divide a demand line into two different halves. The top half is the half for which demand is elastic, and the bottom half is the half for which demand is inelastic. To understand the intuition of this, let's revisit the elasticity formula that's based on percentages. Elasticity is the percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. Along the top half of demand, say at a point up here, price is relatively large and quantity is relatively small. Because price is relatively large to start with, any change in price will represent a relatively small percentage change and because quantity is relatively small to start with, any change in quantity will represent a relatively large percentage change. So we've got a relatively big percentage change in quantity and a relatively small percentage change in price, giving us an elasticity of demand that in absolute value is greater than one. Somewhere along the bottom half of demand, like for example here, now price is relatively small and quantity is relatively big. For some movement along demand, for some change in quantity and price, the percentage change in quantity will now be pretty small because quantity started off relatively large, and the percentage change in price will be relatively big because price started off relatively small, giving us an elasticity that's inelastic or less than one in absolute value. So we've seen that when a demand curve is really a demand line, elasticity varies along it in a very specific way. In fact, 
Elasticity of demand varies along most demand curves. There is a special type of demand, however, called a constant elasticity demand, along which elasticity is the same at every point. Constant elasticity demand curves have the exponential form of x is a times p raised to the power epsilon, where x is the good of interest, where a is just a positive constant, where p is price, and where epsilon is a negative constant. You've already seen an example of these in the elasticity of demand video. In that video, I used the example of a Cobb-Douglas utility function, u equals x to the one-half times y to the one-half. For this utility function, we can derive the demand function for good x to be income divided by two times the price of x. This can alternatively be written as income divided by two times the price of x to the power minus one. In this example, a is income over two, p of x is price, which means then that elasticity of demand is a minus one, which in fact is always the case for any Cobb-Douglas utility function. So Cobb-Douglas utility functions give us constant elasticity demand curves, where elasticity is a minus one at every point along demand.